I've shown you how to draw fast in Clipsity Paint, but how do I color it in? Welcome back. I'm Gregor Tchaikovsky, and I still make a comic called Loading Artist. You might have seen my other tutorial about how to draw fast in Clipsity Paint using Clipsity Paint's secret features. Spoiler alert, it's vector layers. And now you might be thinking, cool, I've got my line art done, but how do I color it in? Yes, if you're trying to fill in a vector layer, you'll find out that it's not possible. But that's okay, because you shouldn't be filling in colors on the same layer as your line art anyway. Because that, that, what is that? Is this high school? Is this MS Paint? Are we Piet Mondrian again? I don't think so. Now, after such a spicy statement, let me just backpedal here for a second and say that everything I'm about to show you in this video is just my way of doing things. I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm just saying it's the best way for me. And even then, I'm not so sure. All right, let's take a look at this file. I've got my line art layers in here in a folder I cleverly named lines. And now let's create a new raster layer and put it beneath your line layers. Okay, now let's color it in. Uh-huh, uh-huh, wow. <laughs> what a waste of time. Surely there must be a better way to do this. Oh, I know. The fill tool, of course. Good old fill tool. How could I forget about you? Oh dear. It seems it doesn't know what to fill because we're essentially filling in an empty layer. But that's okay. It just means we need to set our reference layers. Alright, this is one of those features that once I found out about them, it amazes me that it doesn't exist in other programs. Without reference layers, you're basically limited to either filling in around whatever already exists in the layer you're filling, <coughs> or maybe you turn on the All Layers button that might exist. But now suddenly it's taking into account everything in your picture, which isn't always ideal because you might have a lot of overlapping layers and stuff. But with reference layers, you can tell Clip City Paint exactly which layers you want to be looking at when deciding what it's filling in. Now this is how you do it. First, select the layers or folders you want to set as your reference layers. And then click this cute little lighthouse button. This little lighthouse over here means that this layer is now acting as a reference layer. Now that we've set our reference layers, click the Fill tool, and specifically the Refer Other Layers subtool. Take a look at the Refer Multiple section. This lets you choose what it should be looking at when filling in. You can have a look at all layers, or reference layers, or selected layers, or the layers in the folder you're currently working in. These are all handy in their own ways, but for now we want to be working with reference layers, so click that cute little lighthouse. Now, make sure we're in our color layer and start filling in. You can also click and drag to fill in multiple sections at once. Important notes. Uh, when filling in colors, it's best to extend your coloring to go behind the lines a little bit, just to make sure you've really caught every pixel. Filling in without any of these techniques will fill in until it meets the line, but it can leave some kind of fuzzy pixels where it wasn't sure if it should still count or not. Let me lower the opacity of these lines just to show you exactly what's happening. This is not good. But luckily, Clip Studio Paint offers a couple of excellent techniques to combat this. By default, in the Refer Other Layers Fill subtool that we're in, area scaling is turned on. This basically means it'll add or subtract an amount of pixels around the outside of your fill. This is fine for most cases, but just make sure the number you pick isn't too high, otherwise it might start coloring beyond your lines. If your line art is done with vector layers, you can turn on Fill Up to Vector Path. This will fill all the way up to the center of your lines, but beware that this does not take masks into account. So if you've masked out some of your line art layers, it will fill in as if those lines are still there. So just keep that in mind. Remember, you can hold down to continuously fill across different areas. If you find that your fills are leaking out beyond your vector lines, it's probably because your vector paths aren't actually intersecting or connected. In this case, you can fiddle with the closed gap setting, so it automatically considers lines close enough as, eh, close enough. Personally, what I find works best for me is having both fill up to vector path, as well as a low amount of area scaling. And speaking of area scaling, I prefer the rectangle mode of scaling. I'm not 100% sure what it does, but it does it a little bit better. Feel free to experiment. Alright, now that I'm done explaining about fill tools and how reference layers work, I have to admit a little something something. I said this video is about how I color in my comics, but the truth is, I've been lying the entire time. This is not how I color in my comics. <gasps> this is a bit of a twist. Bit of a bit of a twist in the video right now. Keep it spicy. Keep it exciting. There's a reason why I explained it this way. Because for most, like 99% of people, everything I've just been telling you is probably like good enough. But for me and my comics, I don't use raster layers. I use something else altogether. I use fill layers. 
All right, fill layers. A fill layer is basically a flat color with a mask. Using the auto select tool, specifically the selection for referred layers subtool, I select the parts I want to be a certain color, create a new fill layer. You can do this by going layer, new layer fill, or better yet, make a hotkey for it. Personally, I use control squiggly. Notice the auto select tool has settings just like that fill tool. So I also have it referring to reference layers, so it knows what to select. And, just like with regular layer masks, you can also paint it in by hand, or use the fill tool. I do this for every color. And, <laughs> I know what you're probably thinking at this point. You're thinking, what? Why? Who are you? Good questions. Why use a million fill layers when I could have just used like one or two raster layers? It's a good question. Something I ask myself every day. For most cases, a raster layer or two, that would do the job just fine. Even what I'm doing right now, totally, totally would have done the job. But with comics, fill layers become incredibly useful because of like how often something might appear in different panels. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say I get this far into making a comic, but then wait a minute. Hmm, what if this couch was blue instead of brown? I can just do this. Nice. It changed the color of all the couches at the same time. To change the color of a fill layer, double-click the color box part of that layer. But if you're a pro and want to change the color quickly and in real time like I just did, switch to the object operation tool and change the color in the color wheel. Of course, you want to, you want to be using hotkeys for all of this to, to be extra fast. If I had changed my mind about the color of the couch, but I had all my colors on a raster layer, I'd have to manually refill in each couch by hand, which is just silly and a huge waste of time. <sighs> just come to my attention that this actually is possible to do with raster layers. And it's all because of one sneaky little settings box that I just happened to not see. Apply to connected pixels only. Alright, so what does apply to connected pixels only even mean? Well, by default, it's on, and that basically means the fill tool will fill in whatever you clicked on up until it isn't that thing anymore. But if you turn it off, it will not only fill the area you clicked in, but everything else that shares that same color. So let's go back to that couch example I was so confident about earlier. In this version, I have all my colors on one raster layer. I want to change that couch to blue, boom. Some important things to keep in mind with this whole thing. Keep that setting switched on, and only turn it off when you want to start replacing colors. Otherwise, it will fill everything in. Because if you have an empty layer, that layer is basically filled with emptiness. And if you're clicking something, it's basically replacing that emptiness, plus all the other emptiness with the color you're just filling. You get, does that make sense? Does it? Also, if you're dealing with similar colors, be sure to turn that color margin way down so that it doesn't replace colors you didn't mean to replace. Because if you're not careful, you might accidentally have turned a lot of colors into the same one. All right, well, that discovery has definitely uh, made me question my methods. I mean, it does sometimes get a little messy and confusing with how many layers I've got going on with these fill layers. So it is tempting to switch my coloring workflow from a bunch of fill layers to just a couple of raster layers. But I decided to stick with my fill layers. I have my reasons. And that'll be for another video. Anyway, now that we've got our colors down, it's time to make things pop with some shading. Alright, shading. Alright, shading. The way I shade comics uses both techniques that we just talked about. I make a fill layer. I usually go for something grayish blue, but that's totally up to you and your style. In fact, I insist that you use something else. Grayish blue is my thing. Stay away from grayish blue and grayish purple. I've been experimenting with that too. And then I move it above all my color layers. Change the blending mode from through or normal to multiply. This will now blend the shading color on top of the colors beneath it quite nicely. Of course, we don't want everything shaded, so let's start with a clean, empty mask. Select the mask and hit delete on the keyboard. Or go edit, delete. And then using a brush or a pen or whatever, you can start shading. But uh-oh, what's this? I've gone over the lines. Well, you can just not go over the lines, but that takes a certain level of patience and care that I just do not have time for. Instead, what I do is first select what I want to shade in, like the head, for example, using the auto select tool that we used earlier. Then I change back to my brush or pen or whatever and just swish. Nice. That's how I get those clean curves with my shading. 
But you might find that one shading color doesn't go well with everything. That grayish blue, it is wreaking havoc on yellow. That is not mixing well. So instead of relying on one fill color, yes, even more fill layers. One for each color, why not? I don't, I don't care. But here's a little tip though. Instead of reselecting the area you want to shade in and yada yada yada, doing, doing all of that again, you can always just clip that shading fill layer directly onto that specific color below it. So it only appears wherever that color appears. To do this, select the layers you want to clip and go layer, layer settings, clip to layer below, or better yet, just press control alt G. I can also clip this rainbow layer onto my line out here if I want. The possibilities are endless. And because you've already done all the work about selecting and making sure something is filled in, I don't have to worry about that ever again because I've already got that information in that layer and I'm just piling things on top of that one layer. You know what I mean? And that's it for today. If you liked this tutorial, don't forget to check out my other one about how to draw fast in Clipsity Paint. And speaking of Clipsity Paint, well this whole video is all about Clipsity Paint, but, but, but basically, if you're new to it and you're, you've been finally convinced to buy it, feel free to use the link in the description below because every time someone buys Clipsity Paint using my link, I get a tasty little sandwich. Oh, speak of a sandwich, here's one right now. Um, delicious. And as always, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment below. Or better yet, catch me live on Twitch. That way I can't ignore you. But if Twitch isn't your thing, don't worry, I'm also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of the classics. Got a Discord, got a subreddit, and best of all, got a website. Yes, a .com. LoadingArtist.com, the best place to read Loading Artist comics. And I just got a snazzy new update recently, like a really big snazzy, fast, super fast. But anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching, and um, until next time. Oh, and also a Patreon!